Uh, we're very pleased to have Admiral James Lyons with us. Sir, welcome. Well, yeah, thank you, Frank. Um, sorry I missed the earlier uh, presentations uh, due to my three hour and 20 minute commute this morning. But, you know, as a number of you heard me uh, say before, we've had many opportunities to change the course of history. And it hasn't mattered whether it's been a Republican or a Democratic administration, we failed every one of them. Starting with Carter, went to the takeover of our embassy. We could have cut off Khomeini and his Islamic fundamentalism at the knees. We were gonna take Cog Island, and he rejected it. We could have walked in. The next time was the Marine barracks bombing. And you all probably wonder why we never responded. I won't go into the long detail, but the guy that sabotaged the strike and I'm glad you're all sitting down, was the Secretary of Defense. Not once, but twice. Reagan approved, the, the French wanted to do a combined strike, and Reagan approved it, and Weinberger wouldn't issue the order. I have personally talked to George Schultz and Bud McFarlane. They told me they pleaded with him, and he wouldn't do it. You have to say, who the hell got to him or what, or what got to him? I've never been able to get an answer on that. In the Gulf tanker war in 87, we were going to bring down the Khomeini regime. You know, and the guy that sabotaged, I had brief Weinberger at my headquarters at Pearl Harbor that summer. And this was going to be in August of 87. And the one who undercut us the most was our own chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Crow, at the time. You know, if you go forward and you look at, you know, we shot down by accident that Iranian civilian airliner a few months later. And what did Khomeini do? He said, I'm drinking from the chalice of poison. And he said, I have to make a truce with Saddam Hussein because the Americans have shown they're coming in on Iraq's side. Well, think of what the hell we could have done had we executed the strike we wanted to do in August of 87. You know, we all say we have to identify the threat. Well, I think the one who identified it the best was Erdogan from Turkey when he said, Islam is Islam. There are no modifiers. Democracy is the train we ride to our ultimate objective. He couldn't have said it any plainer. And until you recognize that Islam is a political movement masquerading as a religion, you're never going to catch, come to grips with it. And as Admiral, far as a strategy, let me just conclude one point. thing. And as I just had with my latest op-ed, the Obama administration has a strategy. It's very simple. Any thinking American should be able to grasp it. It's anti-American, anti-Western. It's pro-Islamic. It's pro-Iranian and pro-Muslim Brotherhood. And with that, I'll yield the mic. Thank you, sir.